what's up everybody this is jay and this is my snowfall season 4 episode 10 finale fight or flight now in this recap i'm gonna break down what happened in the final episode for snowfall season 4 and also at the end give you my real talk review on what i thought about the season as well as this episode now we know that a lot has happened in snowfall season 4 and in episode 9 it, you know we saw franklin and his crew finally clean house and get rid of a lot of the people that was bothering them and that had betrayed them franklin got a lot to deal with a lot on his plate a lot of things that have fallen into his lap that was unexpected and we see what he's gonna have to deal with in episode 10 now if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe hit that like bang that bell and let's get into it now we see that uh his father alton is coming in all pro black and militant got his fro shaped up right and he's at the school for young franklin and they mad he won't pledge allegiance and he said oh well don't worry i know why because i told him not to that's why and don't worry he ain't coming back to this school no more so you don't have to worry about getting him to do it and so he leave with uh young alton after he done told the teachers uh what's going on so young alton and young franklin leave and he telling them you know hey don't worry about that I'm I'm gonna put you in a new school and franklin see this poster of california with reagan and everything and he's sitting there and he said i don't want to leave all my friends are here and he said oh don't worry about it son you're gonna meet new friends it's, it's a better school better things for you it's all right come on you can leave and so we see that franklin having to deal with things that his father has made him deal with before and so now he's in the hospital thinking about it um and we see that his mama he asked her how to get in touch with him and she say she was reluctant at first but then she tells him that if you put word out there at the uh, shelter you can get in touch with him but remember he loved you and he was trying to do right baby and so he all uh, go ahead and leave meanwhile we see scully loading up the shotgun hand on the pump and he pissed he ready for revenge and he even putting the gun to his boys talking about y'all better find me something about franklin saying and everybody to touch my babies or else i'm gonna put this right here up on you and i'm gonna start by killing you right now and so meanwhile we see that franklin is rolling with leon and while they rolling he get a page so they pull over he goes to uh, make that phone call to see who it is and we see teddy he got a pile of booger sugar lines he's high as a kite that ain't no powdered sugar that is straight pure raw and so he answered the phone and he pissed about the radio and alter on the breakfast club rejects spilling the beans and so he said have you heard the radio so franklin go in the car turn on the radio and of course it's alton and he's talking all kind of stuff they got the wrong black man you know the cia killed irene abe and so he telling sadat x he's saying yeah man it was a setup but i'm gonna tell you i know his name and then he said his name his name is teddy mcdonald and uh he said i'll tell his real name and aliases so meanwhile teddy about to shit a brick and so he pissed he ready to destroy everything he can and uh alton is just steadily running his big ass mouth on the radio franklin everybody is listening and franklin know right now this thing got real serious now nah, he didn't went too far and so franklin goes to the clinic the shelter and he's like where's uh alton and dude like well if he wanted you to know he'd have told you he like uh what do you know how this is run did alton tell you um well, let me tell you, okay, this is all possible thanks to a donation from this Franklin Saint Foundation. I'm Franklin Saint, okay? If you want to keep this place up and running, you better let it know. Or else, hey, I can have this whole thing shut down. And so dude wasn't saying nothing. So Franklin got real serious and he like, even Grandpapa Smoke right there, he knew Uncle Ben's knew something was wrong. And he told him, everybody get up out of here. And he like, hold on, you can't do that. And Leon like, boy, you better shut up, Buster. And so uh, dude, he got quiet real quick. He ain't want to get popped by no young thug. And so, uh, you know, Franklin said, y'all hear me? I said, everybody up out of here now. And so everybody got their stuff and got to stepping. And so dude, a little salty, he like, boy, you ain't right. You wrong for this. He like, hey, you better let me know where Alden is, all right? That's all I need to know. And so dude left and everybody salty. But 
Franklin don't give a damn because it's real out here in the field. Meanwhile, Teddy is going crazy in the house. He goes and picks up the phone and it's Franklin and he's telling him about how he's still on the lookout for Alton and he's working on it. And Freddie said, hey, look, you need to go ahead and find it. So I'm going to put you and your family in the same boat as Alton. And we know Alton is in the Titanic right now. And so Franklin said, hey, you part of the CIA? Well, you should know. About how to manipulate people i don't respond well to threats and so teddy pissed he didn't threw the phone down and now franklin is that starting to side with alton meanwhile we see that his mama then went to go meet up with top notch she got a special little package of two passports to get the hell out of town and he like hey let me tell you something as far as i'm concerned he's a hero these people need to stop destroying the community so she slide him a little mississippi knot for getting them passports together then he like go ahead if you see him tell him i said he a hero we admire him Meanwhile, Alden sneaking in the house and he like, uh, Franklin, you there? And then he go in the little closet and finally get his little deuce deuce and a half, deuce and a quarter. And he should have been had that little pea shooter, but he ain't have it. Did somebody come? He hear it. He get a little worried. And uh, Franklin, is that you? And he's like, yes, yeah, me. And so he's like, did you come alone? And said, yeah, I told you I would. And so then they talk and he's like, look, you got to get out of town, all right? You, you just got to leave. He's like, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to meet up with him. I want you to give me his info and I'm going to put a stop to this. He said, what you think? You going to take on the CIA? He, he said, yeah, I'm going to take him out. They ain't going to want to protect him once I'm done outing him. He said, even if you say what you say is true, what you think they're going to let you kill a CIA officer? He said, hey don't worry he said i'm a trained killer he said i didn't did some dirt you ain't you scared he said yeah you should be too then they had scully at the door he said i thought you was alone and he said hold on go go hide go take cover and so now he go in the closet that's something he should have did before he ran his mouth on the damn uh, radio so scully come in the back door knock knock anybody home i just want to talk and so he looking for him with the sawed off shotgun and of course he walking into a trap because he don't know where the hell he going and uh before he know it he got the shotty ready but we see alton come down and do a little duck shot like he was james bond or whatever and uh he caught scully in the gut scully took a little shot off and caught alton in the little shoulder franklin shooting back at him it was a little little gun fight or whatever and uh we see that once uh, Alton was shot and Scully was shot, Scully ran out the back door and Alton was laid out. So Franklin went to go see how he doing. So meanwhile, we see that he getting patched up after getting shot in the shoulder. Franklin telling him, you need to go to a hospital. You, you've been shot, Alton. And he like, no, give me that phone number. I want to meet. And he like, look, you can't meet with him. You need to go. You need to leave. You need to disappear. And he said, all right. OK, I get it. That's how it's got to be. I'm going to leave. All right. And so uh, while Franklin is still talking and got his back turned, this fool then picked up something and clubbed him upside the back of his head and knocked him out. So Franklin then got hit with the little okie doke and he passed out on the floor. And so Alton, next thing you know, he dips out while Franklin is passed out next thing we see is uh his mama waking him up and she like you all right baby alton paged me and told me to come over here and check on you you need help and so he had his fro luckily for, for cushion and protection but it still put him to sleep and so he looked and realized he didn't stole my pager and so he realizing that alton is gonna try to meet up with teddy so he called teddy anyway he got the number memorized and uh teddy tell him hey out of respect i'm gonna tell you where we're meeting and so he like hey you can't go meet with him he like this is something i gotta do but you can come if you want and so uh alden is ready to meet teddy franklin trying to go and sissy talk him into going letting him go with him so we see teddy driving to the meat spot with a little shoddy on the side on the seat so we know he coming to meet for business meanwhile we see jerome in the hospital with louis we see that scully is trying to tend to his own wounds he like a little war medic doing surgery on himself he got a little roast beef hanging out underneath his shirt he look a little shook but he keep looking at the picture of his babies and he thinking i gotta get revenge meanwhile we see that the meat spot alton is there he got his little 22 ready uh ready to do battle he think he about to take down the cia meanwhile next thing we see that teddy rolls up 
So Teddy rolls up in the stankin' lankin'. Alton sees him rolling up, and so now he ready. Next thing you know, he tries to get out fast, but his shoulders, he got that shoulder lean. And so Teddy peeps that he got the shoulder lean. So he look, and he got his little bug eyes, and he telling him, when Teddy get out, put your hands up. And so we see he got his gun drawn on Teddy. Teddy pulling it, playing it smooth. And he's saying, uh, I thought you wanted to talk. He said, I do. But I don't want to kill you. But I will if I have to to protect mine. And then he says, uh, so, uh, you know, what, what's going on? And he says, uh, I want you to let my son out of the game. He said, your son, you need to talk to him. I mean, he's the largest supplier of crack cocaine in the in the country. Then he said, no, nah, no, nah, don't try to spin this. He said, I'm not spinning it. And while he talking, he had the gun on the side of the door the whole time, ready to pull a draw on him. And so he trying to tell him about some damn demand and, and 400 years of slavery and Jim Crow and all of this. Like, man, Teddy don't want to hear that crap. And then we see the Teddy uh, then told you know franklin he like what did you do and we see franklin rolling up with sissy and he said hey and anyway we see scully he bleeding out he got his little case swiss with red laces and red blood on it he's coming to the hospital and he called louie got the drop on louie he like yeah where's your man she said he gone but he beat that old fake ass leather sweater and so he know that she was lying don't lie to me I want to know who had a hand in taking out my babies or else. And so she's scared. She about to, you know, really have a heart attack. Meanwhile, we see everybody there and they having a little meet point. And so Franklin is trying to tell Alton to chill. Alton telling them they need to leave. Meanwhile, everybody has got their own little point. Teddy like, look, Franklin, he betrayed you. He put everything at risk. And then Franklin like, you right. And he pulled a gun on, on Alton. So now Sissy is worried. Meanwhile, back at the hospital, we see Louis is sitting here trying to talk, talk, uh, you know, Scully down. And here come Jam and Jerome. He like, hey, hold on now. Hey, I'm the one you want. I'm the one killed your girl. And so now she worried because she don't want Jerome to get killed. And she telling him, don't do it. If you do, it's just going to keep on killing because people going to have to come for you and yours and it ain't going to never stop. And he bleeding out and Jerome starting to see he getting a little weak and he's starting to fade. So Jerome's starting to realize he got a chance to make a move while he talking to Scully. Scully's still trying to hold it together and keep the gun on her. Meanwhile, we see that Franklin got the gun on his father. And he's telling him, you know, put the gun down. And Alton is like really pissed now because now he got to choose between if he shoot Teddy, then Franklin might shoot him. And then Sissy going to see that Franklin shot everybody, his, uh, her man and her, his dad and everything. And Teddy, he pulls out his gun saying, all right, this is this is going too far. And so now she runs in the middle saying, wait, 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 hold on. And so now Franklin pissed that she didn't got in the middle. And uh, now he pulls the gun on Teddy because Teddy got the gun on his mama too. And so me. Meanwhile, we see Scully having to meet a, a moment of weakness, and he's sitting here, and, and Louis trying to tell him, don't do it, it's going to be nothing but killing and revenge. She got a little tear in her eye, jamming Jerome, a little worried, and he sees Scully starting to fade, starting to get a little weak. So he go ahead and make his move and he go ahead and rush him like he was Lawrence Taylor and tackle his ass and pull the gun down. And then Scully, he just start tweaking out on the floor, shaking. He hurt. He losing blood. And he was damn near dying anyway if he didn't get taken out pretty soon and get some help. Meanwhile, we see that now we see Franklin got the gun on uh, Teddy because Teddy had the gun or where his mama and his daddy. And so he's telling her, she's saying, look, wait a minute. What if we leave, okay? Franklin, you got to make your own choice. Hey, baby, I got the passports from Top Notch. How about we leave? We go to Cuba, like you said, just me and you. We can get away from all of this, huh? And so Teddy thinking about it, and he realized that if he shoots uh, Alton that Franklin would probably be forced to shoot him and it would ruin everything and then he kind of give Franklin the look like I can't believe you pulled the gun on me meanwhile she's trying to get everybody attention and come to some type of agreement and so it doesn't seem like it was gonna work at first because Teddy was dead stone face serious but Alton say you know what all right okay I'll put it down let's go I'll leave and so she puts the gun down and so now it seems that 
everything is cool she said all right we'll leave teddy gave the look a little bit like okay all right we'll see how it go you gonna leave all right so he put the gun down and then franklin he see once teddy put the gun down he put his gun down and next thing you know we see that they had a little private jet and alton got a little slang and he telling them i'm sorry for whatever i may have done may have done anyway franklin kind of give him the side eye and he tell him he love him or whatever and he leave but franklin ain't even crack a smile or no emotions or cry or nothing but then mama come you mama you know we still got a business to run ma i mean i can't do it all on my own and she like it's okay baby i'll be in touch and then while she giving him the hug he start to break down have a little tear shed a tear or two and uh she give him a kiss and then next thing you know she getting on the plane with this old punk then so he get on the plane with her and franklin he break down a little bit and cry because he got to lose his mama because of this dude and is messing up the business but she get one last look goodbye and then she was off on the plane so franklin stood there watched him leave and then before we knew it here come teddy walking up and so franklin talked to him and then teddy say hey i'm gonna have to leave for a while it's gonna be a new point of contact gustavo will still make the drops as usual and so he leaves and they and freddie i mean teddy and franklin everything is cool meanwhile we see franklin go to the hospital and jerome sitting there talking with a cop so franklin like what in the world he wondering what's going on so he come he's everything all right with louis everything good and uh jerome like nephew uh scully came through he like what he said yeah man scully came through try to kill him man he said well let me go ahead and talk to her is she all right he said hey hold up she don't want to see no visitors right now and so he kind of stand in them confrontational wise and he like yeah she ain't trying to talk to nobody so franklin like oh really like that he like yeah uh we talk to you later he like okay all right okay meanwhile gustavo putting up these keys like it's you know gold metal flower and we see that uh the other cia contact come and give him the little uh, envelope he said here's the uh info you wanted and gustavo tell him put it on the table when he leave he open it up and we see that he ended up getting a file on lucia and so now lucia sitting there having nice little drinks dressed nice and chilling and so he like oh you want to leave with me huh okay meanwhile we see that louis coming back to the club with jerome he like hey all right louis got to have you back auntie say we got a lot of business to discuss but right now ain't the time we'll talk about it later she like no nah, right now is a good time and he like oh okay that's what's up she say how you feel you all right she say i'm a little sore but you know that and then jerome come over and put this bag of money down he like yeah we want to do our own thing we figure we give you 12 a key that's 20 percent more than what you paying the white man that's fair he like oh okay that's fair he like yeah i mean we could either do it this way or we can go out on our own he's like oh okay so well, i mean what you all gonna just leave she like i mean we, it's time for us to do our own thing franklin we've been following behind you long enough and uh i think it's time to do our own he like oh yeah and she said yeah i mean we set up little rock we we set up with the projects i mean it's only right we do our own thing and he said yeah remember how that worked out right when i was out he said yeah when you try to do this then you couldn't wait for me to come back because y'all can't do what i do she said yeah well it's time we about to try and so now nah, franklin's salty because now nah, they didn't decided to go off on their own and then they just telling him we going off and doing our own thing and they ain't even talk to him about it so he leave and uh he don't think about it and so uh you know jerome sitting there all catering to louis meanwhile we see franklin talking with leon and he telling him what's going on and leon like well if you uh want to know i say you let them go on and do their own thing i mean hey they're gonna do it anyway at least they respect you for it and they have to go on and make their own way so you know at least y'all be on good terms and so franklin smile he like okay since when was you the one the smart one strategizing always was you just never listen he say oh, okay and i ain't trying to drop nothing else on your lap but i ain't think i'm trying to be doing this no more and then franklin huh okay so all these people they wanted me to turn you in the cops we got man boy 
you know, everybody coming for you and now you want to go. Let me tell you something. You're going to keep them projects on lock. I'm going to go ahead and talk with, uh, you know, Louie and Jerome and we're going to get the family back together. OK, that's how it's going to go down. All right. Meanwhile, we see in Havana, Cuba, that Alton is laying down having a good night's sleep. Somebody must have gave him that good good and put him to sleep. And uh, next thing you know, we see him pop up. And, of course, Sissy's sitting there with a big old juicy Kool-Aid smile. And he done knocked the dust off that thing. So he done got up. He looking out the window. And next thing you know, he reading this book about the spook that sat by the door. And we see that you know spook is of course a name for spy and of course it's a spook by the door with a gun and of course it's teddy teddy wasn't gonna leave him in that loose end hanging and as soon as he saw teddy because at first he thought it was uh sissy coming back he realized damn you know you didn't fucked up right and so teddy he gave him the look and he like i knew i should have known you wasn't gonna let me leave and he uh teddy is just didn't say nothing and then he turned his back and next thing you know it cuts to where we see in odessa texas and we see that male is like doing a little churchy thing and uh bible study and then she hear Franklin voice and it's like she stopped in her tracks. And he like, oh, nice to see you again, Mel. Yeah, I was just coming to give you the news about your reporter friend. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate she had an accident uh, drunk driving, you know. It could happen to anybody. And so she look a little shook right there. And she like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, um, you know, you, you was trying to keep my name and my business out your mouth and and i i just can't take that chance of my future being ruined by somebody that keeps bringing up my past you tried to take me down you shot me but on the end i came out stronger yeah and i just want to let you know that if you got anything you want to say anything off your little chest you need to speak up now Cause I swear to you, there ain't going to be no more chances. So this is the final chance to say something or else I'm done. And she say, okay, well tell me this. So I know I'm not crazy. Did you kill my daddy? And so she probably tweaking, thinking that maybe she was tweaking out when she was on that Rizot. So Franklin stare her down. He move his head a little bit. Some people think he nodded and said, yes, he didn't exactly say yes. He didn't answer. He was like, hmm all right goodbye male and so then next thing you know we see franklin turn around walk with the cane then he look at the chair and then he leave his cane on the chair and then he starts walking regular just like the usual suspects kaiser so say and then she takes a deep breath because she thought she was about to die and meet her maker but in the end he just came to spook her and he was the spook by the door for her and he left out but we don't know why he did that now it's time for some real talk now i think this was a really good episode i had made predictions that nobody would die in this episode at least we didn't see them die i think that teddy if he shot alton then that's gonna be a problem because sissy is gonna tell franklin and if he kills sissy and alton that's really gonna be a problem but if he gave alton a little double dose of that uh you know act right juice uh, the full dose like when he gave Irene that dose of that lethal injection but he didn't give it a full dose um, then I think that would probably be better because then you could say maybe he had a heart attack or something um, overall I think this was a really good episode um, it was interesting to see young Franklin and young Alton with the Black Panther movement I don't know I mean it showed that you know Alton used to always try to do the right thing for his son but it wasn't that significant it's just interesting in two seasons in a row they had a flashback with the finale also what's up with Scully did he die we saw Scully get shot I think that once uh you know we saw Aunt Louie out of the hospital they probably put his ass in her bed because he probably is not dead and I can pretty much you know guarantee we'll see Scully in season five but I think that that was a bad move for him to try to go and do everything and go take on everybody by himself he should have had backup he should have had his crew and also when he went to go shoot Franklin 
and uh, Alton, he ended up escaping out the back door when they should have went after him and finished the job. You just tried to kill us and we gonna let you leave. That didn't make any sense, but hey, it's TV. Also, I like how Franklin shut down that, uh, you know, clinic, the, the shelter. He told him, look, this is run by the Franklin Saint Foundation. And he said, you need to give up Alden Saint or I'll shut all this down. And dude thought he was joking. And he even tried, you can't do that, Leon, back the fuck up. And he backed up too, real good. <laughs> and everybody got their ass up out of there, including Uncle Ben. And so uh, I think that uh, Alton Saint brought all this drama and problems on his family. He meant well, and uh, they were wrong for pumping these drugs into the black community, but he should have done it in a different way. He should have released the information in an anonymous, covert way, and that way he could have still protected everybody, but at the same time not put everybody at risk and did the right thing. Um, and he definitely should have took his ass to Cuba a lot sooner, maybe even started releasing the information while he was in Cuba. But instead, he ended up doing it the way he was doing it, going on the fake-ass breakfast club with fake Charlemagne, more like Sadat X. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it put everybody at risk. It seemed that that was Teddy's favorite radio show to listen to because every time somebody was on that show, Teddy seemed to be listening. And speaking of Teddy, man, he got a big booger sugar problem, bigger than Tommy Egan. I mean, he gonna have to go to detox and we'll see how that all works out for him in the end in season five. Um, and that mo that book, Spooked by the Door, is an interesting book, but a little tidbit fact, I think it wasn't even written until 1989, which is, you know, after this era. But anyway, um, it was a good book about the CIA and this spy and different things that he tried to use his knowledge to educate and uplift the black community and do other things and it's pretty interesting and it's also something that Nipsey Hussle used to always recommend reading to a lot of his people when they would get out the pen or when he would try to uplift them so it was an interesting read and an interesting tidbit fun fact that they put in the book in the movie rather I should say and and that we saw as soon as he was reading it it was a spook by the dough and if for those who don't know spook yeah it was a derogatory term for black folks but it was also a term used for spies and uh CIA they're known for being spies so anyway I want to see season five I'm, I definitely enjoyed these cliffhangers and it's going to be fun speculating and wondering what angles they're going to present and what are they going to do for season five and you all let me know in the comments is season five going to be the final season or not I'm interested to see what y'all think I'm Jay I'm up out of here and I'll catch you on the next snowfall peace